Hello everybody, my name is Yumi So Thick, and this is the only Yumi guide that you will ever need. Now, the reason why I've chosen to go ahead and create this guide is mainly to help all Yumi players out there, like both the good, like both the good and the bad, because that because who knows? Even if you're an expert at her, expert at her, you might learn something new today. I don't know maybe now I've th now the other reasons why I've chosen to make this is because I've come across way too many people that have had just terrible terrible experiences with Yumi way too many people hating Yumi for reasons that do not apply to good players so that's why I've chosen to create this to help better the entire Yumi community and to help better to help better the knowledge of this champion now, let me first start with saying why Yumi is not a good champion for beginning players. Like, let me repeat myself. She is not a good champion for people who are new to the game. Why do I say that she is not a champion that beginning players should play? The reason why I say that is because she is one of the most if not the most unique champion in the game what does that mean that means that she shares very very little similarities between all the other champions in the game with yumi you don't have to control your movements with yumi you don't have to learn how to dodge skill shots with yumi you don't have to learn how to roam through the jungle you don't have to learn how to roam from top lane you don't learn how to do any of that you don't learn how to cs you don't learn any of that as yumi you don't you don't learn that riven is a better player for i mean he's a better champion for new players than yumi because riven teaches you how to cs she teaches you how to avoid skill shots she teaches you how to actually move your champion she teaches you all that stuff that Yumi doesn't teach you. All that Yumi really does teach you is how to stare at the map. That's really about it. That's all she really does teach you is how to stare at the map. And to be honest with you, if a new player plays her, she will very likely teach them bad habits that will be hard for them to overcome and make them not have fun in the game. So like I said, Yumi, in my honest opinion... Not a good choice for beginning players. Right. Now, let's go ahead and get done with this introduction. Let's go ahead and get in. Let's go ahead and get into what you guys really, really want. Let's go ahead and start talking about her skills. Let's go ahead and start talking about her. So, let's start with the first skill. The first skill is her Q. Now, her Q, it's a two-part. It's a two-part thing. Well, two to three maybe four parts whatever i'll just explain the whole thing so with her q when she is not on a champion i'll explain that in a bit when she's not on a champion her q is a line skill shot it's a line skill shot the flash for about two seconds and then after about one second of flight it will then become empowered and that empowered q will then do additional damage for like for to up to 8% of the target's current health in, ter in terms of percentage. Now, if it do now if it is not empowered, it's not really going to do the current health damage, but if it is empowered, it's going to do the current health damage. So you always really want to get that empowered Q when you can get it. Now, you can obviously see the numbers here. And you obviously see that it's going to go down, like the, like the cooldown is going to go down, things like that. Now, one thing that a lot of Yumi players don't know about her Q is that it stays at 90 mana no matter what point in the game it is. It is a 90 mana skill, period. No matter how many points you have into it. So, that's the that's the basics of her Q. Now, let me explain what I now let me explain what I mean when I say attached by explaining her W because that's the next skill. Her W is where she attaches 
to an ally. Let me show you. So I'm going to spawn an ally dummy. Like so. And I'm just going to put a target dummy here for later. So with her W, she at literally attaches to the champion. She does not get out of the champion unless she decides to or the champion dies. So she can stay in the champion for really however long she wants to. Until, unless the unless the ally dies or unless she chooses to now with her w comes quite a few interactions so let's let's start with her w i mean not not her w let's start with the q interaction right quick because remember how i said like remember how i showed you where when she's not on a target it's a line skill shot when she is on an ally it becomes a missile that follows your q see that follows the q Sorry about that. It follows a Q like so. I mean, it follows a cursor, mouse, thing, that thing, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. It follows the cursor wherever it goes, and it flies for about two seconds. Now, you can use this to your advantage to dish out a lot of damage throughout the landing phase. And once you get good at this, because I really highly, highly recommend that you practice this, because once you get used to this, You'll be hitting people at angles that that they probably shouldn't be hit, really. Because, like, the whole Q, the whole missile is a hitbox. So you can hit them with the side of the missile, the back of the missile, the top of the missile, the tip of the missile, things like that. You can hit them with that, and it still counts as damage, okay? So once you, get, so once you really get used to that Q, like, once you get used to doing that... You'll be weaving your cues between minion waves. You'll be weaving them between the actual minions themselves. You'll be hooking them around at such weird angles. You'll be rapidly switching targets. So, like, you can aim it at the thresh, like, aim it at a thresh, and then immediately switch that sucker right over, right over to the ash. That's just a few, that's just a couple feet away. You could bait things out like that. It is such a, it's such a great skill to play mind games with your, mind games with your enemy with. It's just so good. Now, the rest of her W, apart from her, apart from her Q, is as follows. It, <clears throat> excuse me. When you're on, when you when you are on a champion, it will give them adaptive force, so that like, you increase their damage. You quite literally increase their damage, be it AD or AP, whichever they're building most. And as you can see, it goes up by it goes up from twelve twelve percent. To 20 percent in the beginning phases of the game that's not a whole lot of ad but once you start getting the gin with a thousand ad that, 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 that starts that starts to become a lot of ad now with this it doesn't cost her any mana to cast it doesn't cost her any mana to jump off whatsoever now you may be now you may have just noticed that when i jumped on to the ally you see a yellow bar there now you may be asking what is that yellow bar that yellow bar is actually her cooldown. It is actually her cooldown. See that? Her W goes on a cooldown right after you cast it. So if you jump onto somebody, jump right back off, you can't cast it again for another 10 seconds. Now that goes down. Now that goes down every level you gain. That that it doesn't it doesn't change with however many points you have in it. It changes with your actual champion level. Now at level 11. That's where things really start to pick up and start going good for Yumi. Because at level 11, her W now no longer has a cooldown whenever she does that. Hold on, let me show you. So let me just jump this up to level 10. So we're at level 9 right now. I'm stupid. I said level 10. There we go. So level 10, there's still a cooldown. Now it's a five second cooldown, but it's still a cooldown. Okay? So see that? I can't I can't jump back on to somebody at level at like level 10. But as soon as it hits a level 11, no more cooldown. See that? No more cooldown at all. Now, you may have also just noticed that every time I cast a W, airy procs. Let me explain the airy interaction with her W because this is what you can use in order to leash your jungler 
and make him make him her it whatever have a gigantic amount of health going into their jungle so let me spawn another ally dummy here i'm gonna spot on at a good distance so i can do this correctly let me make sure it jumps all right so i'm gonna jump to this ally right i'm gonna wait for my area to come back because i don't want to do it to this one although i could i just don't want to so watch what happens so i jump to ally give airy shield fly back jump back give airy shield fly back jump back give airy shield and then you can do this however long you want to as long as you don't mess it up now obviously airy is not going to be that quick at level one obviously she's not going to be that quick at level one hold on let me let me reset the game and let me show you what i mean uh, let me kill the oh no wait i just killed myself that was a mistake did not did not mean to kill myself oops <laughs> that was an accident so <laughs> uh, i'm not gonna do auto refresh cooldowns or any of this just so i can show you that, that you can do this however many times you want so ally dummy here ally dummy here and let me show you so jump here and then boom see how area's not that quick now the closer you get the harder this becomes because you can't because like you can miss it and it gets really awkward but that's how you leash your jungler you jump back and forth between the adc and the jungler so that way you can give the jungler constant airy shields over and over and over again now with that being said <clears throat> excuse me with that being said you can use that to your advantage in the middle of team fights as well you can use it in fights so if you so if you start paying attention you start timing it correctly you can just give constant shields over and over and over and over again in the middle of a fight so say you got a diana over here just beating up on uh hold on hold on so say say you got a diana over here right just beating up on an ally in your bush, right? And and you're trying to heal them, but like your heal is down and stuff like that. And say you got another ally right here trying to beat up on the Diana too, right? So this ally is dying. This ally is beating up that beating up the Diana. All right. So let me teleport over here. Let me get off and then teleport over here. So like I said, you got the Diana here. You got your ally here who's about to die. And you got this guy right like you got like you got an Olaf who's almost dead. Diana's whooping on him. And you got this guy right here trying to beat up Diana, right? So you're so you're on this guy, right? When the fight starts. And Diana's about to kill your Olaf, but your heal is down because you used it to get to get your ally over here. So what you start doing, you start jumping back and forth between these two. So you just keep doing that. You just like you just keep jumping back and forth between them to give this man that airy shield. Because that airy shield can be could be literally life or death for him, and you might just wind up with saving him and getting a kill. So you can use that in the middle of fights. You can, you can seriously do that in the middle of fights. It is so good. Now let's go ahead and move on to her next skill, which is her E. Okay. Now her E is her heal, and this is the thing that makes a lot of people hate Yumi. It, it really is a skill that makes a lot of people hate Yumi. It, it is her heal. Now, with her heal, oh, let me let me just get the setup back. I, I want I want to get the setup back. All right, so with her heal, if she is not attached to anyone, it just heals herself. And when she heals herself, she gets movement speed and attack speed. Okay, hold on, let me. Yeah, auto refresh cooldown here, right quick. All right, so you see this? It's like normal attack speed, not really much, and then you get airy, airy speed, much more attack speed, right? Much faster attack speed. All right, so when you cast it, you speed up, things like that. Now, if you attach to an ally, then that healing speed up and attack speed all goes to them. Okay, that's how that works. Now, the thing that trips up a lot of Yumi players <clears throat> is the fact that her E, 
her like her e cost, the mana cost goes up based off of how much mana you have. So if we hover over this, you can see that her e is 40 mana plus sorry about that plus 15 percent max mana. Now with that because of that 15 percent max mana, you can really only cast about four Qs about four e's before you're out of mana. You really can only cast four E's until you're out of mana. It ain't fun. And I, to be honest with you, I think this is one of the highest mana cost skills in the game. So be wary of that when you're trying to heal your ally, okay? Now, you can mitigate that with her passive. Because we're, we're, we're going to ignore the ult. We need to talk about her passive right quick. Because that's another key component of playing Yumi. What is her passive? Her passive is called Bob and Block. And what that does... It is a it is a zap, kind of like a Victor zap. Like you can see that right there. It's kind of Victor zap. And what it does, number one, it goes to Yasuo Windwall, yay. And two, what it does is that it gives Yumi a shield. Okay, it gives Yumi a shield and gives her eight percent of her maximum mana back. So when she casts a skill and she whacks somebody with her passive, she gets eight percent of her max mana. Like, like yeah, eight percent of her max mana back. Now with that shield. The, now with that shield, what you want to do throughout landing phase is that you want to, like when you can, like when you can, you want to get off, pop them with that, get back to your ally, so your ally can have a permanent shield until the enemy breaks it or until you jump off. That's what you want to do. You really need to manage your mana as a Yumi player by learning when to get off, grab that shield, grab that mana, get right back onto your ADC. That's what you got to do. Now, let's go ahead and talk about her ult, which is her R, which is her R, which is called Final Chapter. And let me just level up my character real quick. All right. So now, with her ult, it's basically a series of Sona ults. Like it shoots out wave after wave after wave for about six waves, and if the enemy gets hit with three of those waves, with any three of those waves. They become rooted. Like so. Now. You can't control where... You can't control what orientation that goes after you cast it. But you can get off while you're casting it to move it around. Kind of like an Aatrox Q. And one other interaction that you can do with this is that when you're ulting, you can actually jump to another ally like so. And it still goes off. Okay, that's really all that's really needed to know about our ult. There's not really a whole lot of whole lot of interaction with it. Now, one other special interaction that I forgot to mention earlier about her Q, you can actually hold up, hold up. Let me let me remove these target dummies right quick. Let me put one here, one there. I think is this the good enough range yet? Should be. Nope, I can still hit that. Uh, put that a little wee bit farther away. I'm gonna put that there. We're gonna put you here. I'm gonna put another one here. So I should not be able to reach him from back here. Alright, so as you can see, I cannot reach the target dummy from back here with her Q. Alright? Oh right, and I also forgot to mention that blue circle there that you see. That blue circle, that is the that is the um, that's the border for her Q. So if it hits that border, it, it just disappears and does nothing. Okay. So as you can see with that border, this Q cannot reach the target. However, with her Q in flight, oh, my, my bad, with the Q in flight, <sighs> give me a minute. I don't, I don't screw it up. I don't, I don't screw it up. Hold up. Let me. Let me correct that right quick. Cause I, I done goofed. I still shouldn't be able to reach him back here. Yep. Alright, so what I can do, while the Q is flying, I can jump to another target like so. And I can still control my Q. Now, this is pretty advanced, so you'll have to practice doing that. And once you get used to it, it really does help get the extra distance on that Q if you really need to get if you really need to get to it. Now, with her ult, 
Now, obviously, you cannot cast your Q with your ult anymore. Like, you can't, you can't, not that freaking. Yeah, you can't cast your Q with your ult. However, you can still heal with your, like, while your ult is casting. So you can still heal people and still do things while it's going. So just keep that in mind. Now, now that we've gone over all of her skills, now that we've gone over all of her skills, let's go ahead and move on to talking about her rune pages and the summoner spell. We're going to start with the summoner spell because that's really easy and that's not going to take me long to explain. So with her summoner spells, I'm pretty sure you can clearly see I'm taking Exhausting Knight. Now, a lot of Yumi players will take Exhaust and Heal, and that's fine. That works for them. I personally suck at Exhaust Heal. I don't like it. Heal is a shit rune, in my honest opinion. I don't like it. I hate it. That's just me. Now, with Exhaust Ignite, a lot of the times, the enemy forgets you have Exhaust Ignite. So when they stroll up in there and start trying to whack on your ADC, when they're fighting, you can get a cheeky level 1 first blood out of, out of it with most ADCs. It's just, a matter, it's just a matter of whether or not you and your ADC are actually targeting the same person. Just make sure you're targeting the ADC in that in that capacity. So you can get some cheeky first bloods and get some extra gold in your pocket like before you back. Now you don't have to take Exhaust Ignite. I personally do. That's what I that's what I personally enjoy. I don't like taking heal. I, I just I just don't like it. I hate it. Now let's go ahead and talk about the runes. So there's really there's really only one rune page that a lot of people take that a lot of Yumi players take, and that's gonna be that's gonna be rune page that has airy, mana flow ban, transcendence, scorch, presence of mind, and cut now. Now I'm gonna be posting pictures. I'm gonna be showing pictures of the builds throughout, like when I get to them, so you'll see so you'll see the different pictures. Well, like I said, that's the average one that everybody goes there's not really anything special about it the only thing really special about it <clears throat> is the presence of mind because whenever because whenever you damage an enemy champion you your mana regen increases temporarily for about four seconds so you can get so you can really gain some of your uh, some of your mana back and takedowns will restore about 15 percent of your maximum mana so it can so it can really help especially if you're doing a whole lot of fighting and a whole lot of poking It'll help you manage your mana better, but you don't really need it. it like once you get good, like once you get good enough, like once you get good enough with it, like once you get good enough with Yumi, you're not gonna need presence of mind. And you can go something, you can go something like the Inspiration Tree, with Cosmic Insight and Futures Market, and that'll help you get your items faster. But a majority of players will go presence of mind and cut down because ob because obviously you're the lowest health champion in the game 99% of the time, so cut down is gonna be your favorite thing to take. Now, the one thing I really want to make sure everybody pays attention to are the are the rune stats, like which is like like the extra ability power, armor, MR, things like that. I personally I personally take whenever I go to the average page, I personally take extra ability haste and ability power, and I change out armor and MR depending on who's depending on who I'm fighting. The reason I prefer ability haste is because it helps me get more Qs out and helps me get more it helps me get more heals out. That's what, that's what it really helps me do. You don't have to build that. You don't have to go with that if you don't want to. It's just something that I personally do. Well, like I said, that's the average rune page. Now, the second page is the is more of a defensive rune page. Now, not a whole lot of Yumi's build this. Like, most Yumi's will build the average one. A lot of, like, most, people, most Yumi players will not build the next two that I'm going to talk about. And I'm also going to link... A, um, in the description, I'm also going to link more builds that, that, that people go because one of our, one of our other resident Yumi players in the Yumi discord made a mobile fire link like for the, for the other builds. So I'm going to link that down below. Now, like I said, like I said, the second one is more of a defensive one. It's very similar to the, to the regular one. However, with the secondary page, you're taking bone plating and revitalize. Why bone plating, you might ask? Bone plating is great for whenever you need to get out and you need to walk up and grab your shield because they're gonna hit you. 
they're, they're gonna like they're gonna like slap the willy all over your face like once you get out and go to try to tap them so that bone plating will help you not get slapped by the willy too hard now if you don't want to take that that's fine you could take a uh, second win second win procs off of your q slow i'm stupid i also forgot to tell you that q slows once it's empowered i forgot to tell you that so like i said on the q slow the second wind will proc. I mean, not second wind. The um, font of life. I meant to say font of life. Font of life. Font of life will proc. So it's really good for whenever. Like, it's really good for whenever you don't want to take bone plating. Now, with that being said, there is a more specialized build that I that I created that I personally go, and I call it Ice Ice Yumi. I use a very specific item with that. It is called Everfrost. I'll explain why I do that later. Now, with the now with the with that build is it is my glacial build. I go glacial augment into like with cosmic insight, with the um, and like with stopwatch, and one other thing that I forget off the top of my head. You can see it on you can see it on the screen. <clears throat> and the second page, the second page, the secondary room page, is going down the domination tree with ghost poro and the <clears throat> and the ingenious hunter rune set now with the ingenious hunter rune set like when the ingenious hunter one that helps you get more ults off which is going to be useful considering what you're going to be doing with everfrost and your ult well, like i said i'll get into that in a little bit i'll get into that in a little bit once i start going down the actual build like once i start going down the actual pages for the build which is what we're about to do now, actually. I'm about to go ahead and start explaining the build. So, let's go ahead and start with the average one. I'm just going to go ahead and just build it for you on the screen here so that you can go ahead and see it. Obvious spell Thief's Edge is obvious. And I forgot to get myself gold. I'm just going to level all the way up to... So, obvious Moonstone, obvious. Then Staff of Flying Water, Ardent... Ardent Sensor, Redemption, and if you're feeling spicy, Magi's. If you're not feeling spicy, get Mikhail's. Now, like I said, that's the average Moonstone, Staff of Flowing Water, Ardent Sensor, Redemption, Magi's if you're feeling spicy, Mikhail's if you're not. Now, with Moonstone, because I really need to make sure to explain to everyone how Moonstone actually works because oh my god once you actually once you actually realize this you're gonna be like why the fuck have i not been taking this like item this whole time moonstone straight up says if you affect a champion with attacks or abilities in combat it will heal the most wounded at nearby ally what does that mean so if i hit the enemy ignore the massive shield so if i hit the enemy like that congratulations now my lowest health ally is healed just takes just does that and lowest health ally lowest health ally is healed now why am i saying that this item is busted because you might be thinking oh if you just hit an enemy if you just hit an enemy champion they get a tiny heal okay cool, cool fine why is that broken number one that is on a two second cooldown Number two is the interaction with Yumi's W, which makes it busted. Because every time that apparently you just saw it, you just saw it. So every time that the ally is in combat, when when Moonstone is off, like when Moonstone's on cooldown, when you jump to that ally, congratulations, it activates. It activates and it heals the lowest health target so every two seconds if you're jumping to someone it will heal the lowest health target if you alt the enemy every two seconds like every single two seconds that that moonstone's off cooldown it will heal the lowest health ally if you hit the enemy with a q heals lowest health ally if you heal the ally it heals the lowest health ally as long as they are in combat if you pop somebody with a redemption it heals the lowest health ally. If you pop somebody with Ignite, congratulations, lowest health ally gets healed. 
This item is so broken on Yumi that it's kind of stupid not to take it. So just make sure that you really, really get down the micro there for that Moonstone so you can be the most effective like Yumi player that you can be. Now, on to a now to the other build, which is my personal favorite, but that's just because I'm a very aggressive Yumi that just likes to murder things. It is it is a full damage, full AP build. Now, people obviously will have different variations on it, things like that. But I'll show you what I personally go whenever I whenever I just want to murder everything and everybody in, in the vicinity. Obvious, I go obvious spell thieves because you need that. Then I go Ludens into Magi's into Deathcap into Horizon Focus, and if I and if I want to really give everybody a buttload of healing, I'll go Nash's Tooth because Nash's Tooth. I, like I'm not getting Nash's Tooth for the on hit damage or anything like that. It is strictly because of the 100 ability power that it gives. Like it gives 100 ability power like that or I'll go void staff for that 40% magic pen now what now what are all the benefits of of the full AP build obvious healing is obvious obvious damage is obvious but you may not realize how much damage it actually does now I know this is level one target only but you could do this at level 18 but it's not a complete one shot like that but you will have health and ADC with this build it is not okay you do a lot of damage with it. Wait, hold on. How much damage does this thing do without without a mag without full magis? It does a lot of damage even without full magis. It's hilarious. So, like I said, that's my that is my favorite one, is to go that build. That's that's like like I said, it's just kind of like to murder things, and a lot of people don't realize this, but with the full AP build, you get you actually get more movement speed than Staff of Flowing Water and the rest of the builds. This gives you a gigantic amount of movement speed, like a gigantic amount of movement speed buff. That if you pop this onto a Hecarim, congratulations! Once you get that Magi's fully stacked, you're going. Hold on, wait. Can I fully stack Magi's? Can I fully stack Magi's? Riot, changes, change, like put a fully stacked Magi's in here, please. Thank you. Now, like I said, once you get a fully stacked Magi's, congratulations! Your Hecarim just got a speed boost. Of at least 105% movement speed. Imagine 105% movement speed on a Hecarim or a Lilia. Congratulations, they're a friggin' race car. So that's why I like this build. It's hilarious, it's fun, it's great, and you can actually use this in a rank fight, like a rank match, if you feel like it. <laughs> now, let me show you that specialized build that I was talking about. So, remember how I was talking about with Glacial and Everfrost? Like I said, I'll build. Like, if I go Glacial, I am building Everfrost. Period. There's nothing else I'm going to put on here. Like, it is going to be Everfrost, and then the rest of it is just going to be regular support. Like, da, da, da. Feeling spicy, Magi's. If not, Mikhail's. Or, at, wait, no, 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 I'm stupid. I forgot Chemtech was a thing. I forgot Chemtech Future Fire was a thing. So, what I'll go with this, like, that was my fault for a second. But So, what I usually go with this, I'll usually go Everfrost into chemtech why this into chemtech because with chemtech putrefire read the read this description dealing magic damage applies 40 percent grievous wounds to champions for three seconds immobilizing champions applies 60 percent grievous wounds instead so with everfrost plus the Wait, hold on. I, I just realized that what I said earlier was stupid. Ingenious Hunter equals you having shorter cooldown on your Everfrost. That's my bad. My bad. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. That's my fault. So, with Ingenious Hunter fully stacked with Everfrost, your Everfrost is going to be on a cooldown of, fi of at least 15 seconds. So, that's a 15 second cooldown for a root and a slow that applies 60% grievous wounds if rooted. So, if you combine this with Chemtech plus your ult, it's hilariously awesome. Because with Glacial, don't forget, whoever you hit with that slow or with that 
like whoever hit with that with this active item, there's going to be a gigantic slow zone behind it. So if you whack the whole enemy team with that, they're not catching up to your team at all. Like there's so much good stuff with this that it just makes me sad that nobody else really builds it. Because I want you, I want you to just imagine, imagine for a second, you are on a Twitch, okay? You're on a Twitch. Like say, like say, say this target dummy is the Twitch, right? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me fix the target dummy real quick. So say this, so say this target dummy right here, this one right there is Twitch, and let's say this one right here is Kaisa. Well, not even Kaisa, not even Kaisa. Let's say that that one is <laughs> is Vayne, okay? So this one right here is Twitch. This one right here is Vayne. So your Twitch goes invisible. Want to assassinate the Vayne, right? You don't want her to move, right? So you pop Everfrost. They're rooted for 1.5 seconds, okay? They're rooted for 1.5 seconds with this. So if you combine Everfrost plus your ultimate, which is another, my bad, 1.75 seconds. So 1.5 seconds plus 1.75 seconds equals 3.25 seconds, if my math is correct. Somebody fact check me on that. But three seconds of root. That she can't move from. She can't dash. She can't tumble. Just imagine that for a second. That is three seconds that they can't move. And that's three seconds that they can't move with 60% Grievous Wounds on them. These two, this is such a good build, but it is so situational though. You can't build this in every, in every game. It's extremely situational. But that's that. That's my Everfrost build. That's my personal Everfrost build. That's what I love to go whenever the enemy team has. Whenever the enemy team either has one a lot of healing or two, they have a bunch of champions that are that have to walk up to you menacingly instead of dashing at you or blinking at you like a cat. So that's really so. So that's all of that. Now let me go ahead and explain really how to play Yumi. Because it may it may seem obvious to like to know how to play Yumi, and it, it, it really kind of is. It really kind of is. It's like what do you do? You jump to somebody, you heal them, you throw you throw your Q out, you ult them, things like that. The nuance of it really comes down to your knowledge, restraint, and patience. That's what it really all comes down to: knowledge, restraint, and patience. Because. Like, it's like Master Yi. Master Yi is not mechanically intensive. Yumi is not mechanically intensive. But if you want to play them at a high level, you've got to know when to do things. Because you can't just do things just randomly and expect it to work out all the time. Now, let me explain what a noob Yumi does versus what an expert Yumi does. Like, a, like a noob Yumi, in the middle of laning phase, they'll do one of two things. They're going to do one of two things. Either one, they're going to stay out of the enemy champion like I'm doing right now. I mean, they're gonna stay out of the ally champion like I'm doing right now, and they try they try to act like like a regular support that Yumi is not. Yumi is not a regular support no matter what you try to do to her. So they're gonna try to act like a regular support, and then bada bing bada boom, they get hooked and congratulations, their W is on cooldown. Hold on, let me I didn't I didn't show that. I just realized I didn't show that. So let me let me spawn the Ocean Drake right quick, and let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. I love the Ocean Dragon. Oh, god darn it. Ocean Dragon didn't spawn. Hold on. Let me... Let me, let me figure out something. Because that the Ocean Dragon didn't spawn. Uh, Fire Dragon? Alright, hold on. Game broke. So, it spawned Ocean. And then teleport to Cursor. Really, it didn't... It didn't spawn? What? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, it didn't spawn. Wait. What is this? I... Oh. Oh, I am confused. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. It broke before. And I don't know how to really fix it. So let me let me try to spawn Elder now. 
I mean, not elders. Let me spawn uh, infernal. Can I spawn infernal? Teleport. Man. Can I spawn Baron though? I'm gonna reset the game. So that happened. Spawn Ocean Dragon. And then teleport. Hey, there it goes. Alright, Ocean Dragon is here. So let me show you what I mean by her W like by by what I was talking about when you get like when you get like hooked by a thrush or something and her W goes on cooldown. So once I hit this dragon, once I hit this dragon, my W is going to go on cooldown. Watch what happens. See that? W five second cooldown. So if you get hard CC'd, like if you get hard CC'd at all by anything that is, that is enemy or neutral, then your W goes on cooldown. The only exception is ground with Cassiopeia and Singed. You got to be real careful around them. Because if you walk into Cassiopeia or Singed grounding area, then your W goes on a repeating five second cooldown until you walk out of it. So, there you go. And like I said, if you're like I said during landing phase, what a what a noob ADC, I mean what a noob uh, Yumi will do, they'll stay out of the ADC for too long, doing like pretty much nothing. They're trying, they're acting like a regular support when when I mean, yumi is not a regular support she's clearly not so you can't just do that <clears throat> now the other thing that yumi will do like the other thing that a noob yumi will do is that they'll stay in the adc during landing phase and do absolutely nothing they're on their phone checking stocks looking at porn uh doing something i, I doing something not league of legends related so because of that so because because of players that do that specifically yumi had yumi players have left such a bad taste in people's mouths that it just makes it that it just makes it where they don't want to play with a yumi again and it just like ruins their games whenever they have another yumi so don't so you really need to balance when to be out of the champion and when to not be out of the champion what I tend to do as a Yumi player, I sit in the I sit in the ally champion until like the enemy walks up to where they're in Q range, and I'll throw a Q out and try to smack him. Sorry, my mouse didn't move. So like I said, what I'll do, I'll throw it out and I'll smack him. I'll do that every time it's up. I make sure to keep up that pressure on them and do things that most Yumis don't do. Like, do you sit here? And do you try to aim at them and try to hit them? Do you sit here and throw your Q in between minions trying to, trying to hit them? Do you play mind games with your Q to them? If you're not doing that, you're not doing what a Yumi should do. You're not doing what a Yumi should do. Now, sometimes now sometimes you can be a little bit risky and you can get out and grab your shield like that. Now, what I tend to do is that I tend to wait until the enemy gets close enough to where I can get it like to where I can get the shield or if there's something like a Seraphine like Seraphine Kaisa for example there's not a whole lot of CC in that lane like when Seraphine wastes her waste one of her uh, waste her empowered thing then I can just walk up with impunity and just grab a shield and just walk right back and nothing will happen to me but if I'm fighting a Thresh or a Leona or a Nautilus or a Blitzcrank or what have you then I gotta be real careful when I get out because if I do it wrong, congratulations, I just killed myself because I'll get hooked or Leona Eid or stunned or what have you. Any kind of hard CC, my W goes on a five second cooldown and then I die because I have like the lowest HP in the game. So you really need to balance when to be out and when to not be out. Don't be out when it's unnecessary and be out when it is necessary. Because if you're just out chilling, doing doing absolutely nothing, then you're doing nothing at all. Like, you're being a useless Yumi. You should at least be sitting on your ADC, giving them the extra damage to help them farm. Now, the other thing that a lot of Yumis don't do, a lot of noob, a lot of noob Yumis don't do, they don't look at their map, and they don't ping. Like, you're a Yumi player. You're sitting on the ally almost all the time. 
what you should be doing is that you should be looking at the map. You should be looking at the map, seeing what is going on, telling the jungler where the jungler is if you notice it. You should be on point with that. If that jungler just ganked you bot, you should be in your ADC type into the type into your jungler saying like, hey, their jungle is bot lane. Please go take their top lane jungle. Or hey, they're, they're at the dragon. Please take Harold. Or something or something to that juncture. You should be pinging where you should be pinging danger to to whoever to whoever is in danger. If you notice, if you have like a ward up here by red or something like that. And you notice that the enemy jungler is coming up here and looking to looking to gank. You should be pinging top lane like danger, 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 danger. Like the whole freaking time. You do not need to be sitting there quiet doing nothing. If you notice your ADC about to get ganked, you should be pinging danger, retreat, 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 everything, man. You should be telling, hey, get your ass back to that tower. That That is exactly what you should be doing the whole time. You do not need to be sitting there doing nothing. That is not how good Yumi plays. And all you do is just leave a bad taste in everybody's mouth and you lose your game. Now the other thing that you need to do as a Yumi player is something that all supports need to do. And that's, to, and that's to go and ward. Like look I know it's scary especially considering what Riot did to Yumi's W with that 5 second cooldown BS. But you gotta get off and ward. So like get off ward this... Word that if you can word that do that word that etc etc i'm not going to go on too much about words because that's just something that you just gotta do now the last thing that i want to talk about with, between what a noob yumi does and an expert yumi does you need to change your build based on the game like my question like let, let me let me propose a scenario to you Say you're Yumi and you have an enemy team full of full of assassins. Why aren't you taking Revitalize and sec and like Font of Life or, or Bone Plating? Why are you taking Presence of Mind and Cut Down when you have an enemy team full of assassins? Because you're Yumi, you're not trying to kill an assassin. The assassin's trying to kill you. You need to protect your ADC as best you can. That's what you need to do. You need to protect your team as best you can through like from that from that gigantic amount of enemy enemy assassins. Anti ADC 2021, hello. So like I said, you need you need to change your build based on the situation. So that's really that's really all I wanted to talk about. So let's go ahead and just recap right quick. Let's let's go ahead and recap the gist of what we talked about. So her Q is a her Q is a missile that if you're sitting on an ally, you can control it. And after about one second, it goes on. After about one second, it becomes empowered, does extra damage, and it slows for one second like a ally is slow. Your W is what allows you to attach to people. It gives them more damage, and it. And and after level 11, it doesn't have a cooldown anymore, except for whenever you get hard CC'd. Her E is a heal that has its mana that its mana cost increase, like increases after like after you get more mana. So the more mana you get, the more the more mana cost. Your ult is a bunch of sonal waves that after about three, of it roots. The build, the builds, it, like you can, you can just rewind the video. You can go back to the timestamps I'm gonna post, and you'll find the builds again. Make sure, make sure to abuse the Moonstone. Make sure to abuse Moonstone with your W because of that interaction. It's so good. I'll leave times to out. Don't worry, I'll leave timestamps for all of this. Make sure you look at your map. Make sure you ping relentlessly whenever you notice something. Whenever you notice something strange. Make sure not to be off of your ADC for no reason, and make sure to actually get off. Make sure to actually get off your ADC, get your shield whenever you can. So, this really, so this really is the only guy that you really ever need for Yumi. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to post them in the in the in the comment section. Don't be afraid to don't be afraid to join the Yumi Discord, ask ask some questions and stuff like that. And please, please. Good luck, everybody. Good luck in 2021. And good luck on the Rift.
Yumi Sothnik, out.